Greetings, friends! Welcome back to another episode of Rising Fire! Alright, liquid oxygen! I mean, you know how this story goes. Things burn using oxygen. If we increase the oxygen concentration, they burn better, right? We can condense liquid oxygen because its boiling point is just ever so slightly above liquid nitrogen's boiling point. So if we get a test tube, immerse it in some liquid nitrogen, and pump oxygen gas through it, the oxygen gas will condense and form a liquid. The liquid oxygen is a very pale, sort of baby blue colour, but it's very hard to get a good shot of because it's so cold, any moisture in the air will condense on the tube rapidly and freeze. So that's enough of context, let's light some things on fire. Doritos, they kind of burn, but if we add liquid oxygen to the burning Doritos, they suddenly burn a lot better. Almonds also aren't that flammable, the dumb cunts, but if we add some liquid oxygen to them, they also will burn quite rapidly. All right, none of these things are particularly impressive because the liquid oxygen is really just vaporizing and just using the oxygen gas to fuel the fire. So if we just used our pure oxygen gas from the cylinder, we can achieve the same effect really. We can reignite a burning almond. So what we really want is a reaction where we take advantage of the fact that the oxygen is a liquid. Styrofoam is moderately flammable, but if we pour some liquid oxygen onto it, the liquid oxygen will actually soak into the styrofoam to a certain extent. Making the whole material much much more flammable. <laughs> oh, is my phone okay? Oh. We can also add the liquid oxygen to a burning fuel. So say, let's take isopropanol and we light it on fire. It burns kind of well, but we can pour liquid oxygen onto it. It's not heaps violent because the isopropanol already has some oxygen. It's not actually that oxygen deficient. But what if we take something really oxygen deficient like benzene, light that on fire and then add liquid oxygen to that? that. So these demonstrations are all right, I guess, but we haven't done anything particularly new. So how do we step it up a notch? Well, what if we get oxygen and we put it on the oxygen? This molecule here is ozone. It's well known for being the molecule that protects most of the world except Australia from getting skin cancer. Two out of three Australians. Two out of three Australians. There was a lot of research done in the 1950s, a decade I like to call the pre-60s, on liquid ozone because they were wondering if they could use liquid ozone in rockets. Liquid oxygen is commonly used, but liquid ozone of course has its advantages because it's a more energetic oxidizer so you get a higher specific impulse for the rocket. Sure, ozone is toxic, but we're talking about an agency here that uses stuff like anhydrous hydrazine and plutonium. Did liquid ozone ever get used in a rocket? No. <laughs> Simply because it would just explode all the time, always. Anyway, that's enough theoretical stuff. How are we making it? I mean, it's a simple experiment, really. We just take our high pressure oxidant, run it through our first minus 190 degree cold trap, where we want it to be cold, but not too cold. Then we just run it through here, through 15,000 volts worth of coronal discharge, generated by this transformer here, through this quartz tube, which will come and then go into another 190 degree cold trap, where we collect our explosive. So only risks really associated with this high pressure gases, oxidants, extreme cold temperatures, extreme high voltages and explosives. Oh and ozone's also horrifically toxic. But apart from that there's no other safety concerns. Now I know for a fact that my ozone generator does have quite a low efficiency but if we do generate any ozone we should see that pretty clearly because oxygen is blue but ozone is purple. So we collect some liquid oxygen first, turn the generator on and sure enough within about 30 seconds our mixture graduates from a baby blue to an adult purple and if we keep the generator running for a couple minutes we can see it continues to go more a purple color so we actually are condensing liquid ozone it's worth pointing out that i did thoroughly clean the glassware with good old-fashioned chromic acid before pumping ozone into it so hopefully that ozone stays around rather than just reacting with any contaminants or blowing up with any contaminants on the side of the glassware so i ran the generator for about 10 minutes and then just turned it off and took it out of the liquid nitrogen very carefully. <laughs> ozone has a higher boiling point, so if we just let it warm up 
theoretically, what we're doing is we're gonna preferentially boil off the oxygen and the ozone concentration will further increase before boiling off itself. So if we just sit here and wait, something might happen. Now, that wasn't an explosion, but initially I thought it spontaneously boiled. That is not the case, and looking back on the footage, you can see that the gas actually comes down the line, forcing all the liquid out of the test tube. But the regulator is off, so where did all that gas come from? Let's do some science and run that experiment exactly again, and see what happened. Now, if you ever want to see what a really bad safety hazard looks like, it looks like this in your line. <laughs> so the ozone has flowed back the other way once the uh, plastic heating. Ah yes, some liquid ozone <laughs> exploded and forced gas through all the line and then that blew the stuff out. It's probably a sign the liquid ozone has had enough, really. However, let's do one more experiment. What if we got that same oxygen and ozone mixture and then we added a carbon source to it? Something oxidized such as styrofoam. There's initially a, a very tiny reaction and then uh, nothing, uh, sort of a scary nothing. Because rather than the ozone just boiling away, the ozone soaked into the styrofoam. Now, I wasn't expecting this, but the styrofoam just turned purple and all the ozone just went into it and stayed there for about five minutes. To say this is an explosion hazard is uh, a bit of an understatement. It's a very intimate mix of a fuel and an aggressive oxidizer, but it didn't blow up. Even when we kind of poked the bear, it didn't do anything. It just sort of heated up, but maybe that's a good thing and we should probably quit wire ahead because uh, there's a lot of glass shrapnel that could potentially be thrown around and yeah, let's quit wire ahead. All right, one more experiment. What if we take just some normal liquid oxygen, no ozone, just run of the mill liquid oxygen and we put something in it that really likes oxygen, like say uh, white phosphorus yeah. and we dunk that into some liquid oxygen. What happens there? How that test tube survived like a 400, 500 degree temperature change within half a second, I don't know. All right, we've survived this video unscathed, so <laughs> I want to say thanks to my Patreons. <clears throat> this liquid nitrogen duo is a Patreon perk and it's heavy and I'm weak. We achieved it, so I bought it and then uh, we could do this video. The oxygen cylinder, that was also a perk. Have a look at the Discord. There's a subreddit as well. Is blue the opposite of yellow? I don't know anything about colors. Is blue the opposite of, it's probably not, is it? I probably can't make that joke. <laughs>